G'day and welcome back. So today on the channel, we're looking at slow motion in... I can see you in the mirror. Duck down. I can see your smiling face. G'day and welcome back to the channel. So today we're looking at slow motion in DaVinci Resolve, but using 25 frames per second footage. Now we want to avoid that jittery janky look that we get when we slow our footage down. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you the technique to get that smooth playback. Now, unfortunately, this is only in DaVinci Resolve Studio, so you won't be able to do it in the free version of Resolve. Sorry about that. But anyway, let's jump in Resolve and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Here we are in Resolve and we have some clips here. So we have this one, which is a man moving an orange back and forth on a very crooked frame, which is at 25 frames per second. Then we have an exact same clip. For some reason this frame is slightly straighter, which is a bit strange, but this one is at 50 frames per second. Then we have man pouring water into a kettle or man pouring water into a cup, not the kettle. That's 25 frames per second. And again, the same shot, 50 frames per second. And then we have a man making a very big mess in his kitchen with flour on his hands. So 25 frames per second and 50 frames per second. Now, as you can see, the 50 frames per second hasn't been slowed down yet, but we will slow it down to get that slow motion. So the reason why I shot 50 frames per second is when we slow it down, we can compare it to the 25 frames when we slow it down and see if they can match up in a similar way. So to see if 25 frames per second looks good or it looks really janky. Now 50 frames should look perfect because obviously it's 50 frames per second. If we half it down to 25, that's the timeline speed. So it shouldn't be a problem whatsoever for it. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna slow this image down for half its speed. So again, this is 25 frames per second. Now to change the speed on your clip, all you have to do is highlight your clip, right click, change clip speed. That comes up with your options here. So what we wanna do is change our speed from half the speed and then just go to change. Now, if you go back, right click, as you can see, it's playing at 12.5 frames per second and our speed is at 50%. So let's go full screen. So when we play this back, ignoring our terrible crooked frame, we are getting some really jittery and janky looking footage. That's because we're playing at half the frame rates we actually recorded. So obviously it looks really bad. Now, if we did the same thing for our 50 frames per second. So again, right click, change clip speed, 50%, change. Now when we play it back, for some reason our frame is straighter, but we're also getting nice, smooth looking image. We don't really have that weird jittery look going on. Looks really good. So how do we get that non jittery playback with our footage when it's only at 25 frames per second? What we're gonna do is go to our video section up here, now, if you don't see this, this is under the inspector. So just come up to here and click inspector. Now under video, we're gonna go down to real time and scaling. So this option here. So this is where we can start building that slow motion that's not gonna look completely horrible. So we have real time process. We have nearest frame blend and optical flow. Now it works the same as any effect in Resolve. The first one is always the least process intensive on your computer. And then obviously the one down the bottom is usually the highest processor intensive on your computer. So first of all, let's start with nearest and see what that looks like. And all you have to do is actually select it. You don't need to do anything else. And we play that back. As you can see, Resolve's trying to do a good job, but it looks absolutely terrible. So we're not gonna use that one. Now, next one is a little bit interesting. So it's called Frame Blend. And what Frame Blend essentially does is it adds a dissolve between each frame that it's missing, which sounds really strange, and it is. So this is the result. So it's trying to add a frame in between that frame that's missing and to make it look smooth, but it looks really bad, not the best. Now, the one you wanna use, and with this one here, it's called Optical Flow. So come down here, select Optical Flow. Now, if you're using the free version of Resolve, it'll come up with a big watermark. You can still try the effect out, but it's gonna have a really ugly watermark on it. Now, unlike the other settings, we actually have an option for motion estimation. So project settings, which is the least intensity on your computer, and then all the way down to speed warp, which will give you the best results, but is really high intensive on your computer. So let's start with project settings and let's see if it actually does anything good. So we're getting a slightly better result, but not really that much better. So we'll just skip ahead 
We don't need to do the other ones because you're not really going to get that much of a difference. Obviously, you're going to get a better result with Enhance Better compared to project settings, but let's just skip ahead to the best one, which is Speed Warp. When we play this back, let's see what it looks like. All right, so as you can see, we don't actually get playback. It has a really horrible look to it. So what we can do now is render this clip. So what you do is right click it, go down to, well, go up to, sorry, render in place. Now with render in place, it's gonna make another video file on your computer. You can choose the settings you want. We'll just do this. It doesn't really matter what it is. Go to render and then you choose where you want it. Let's check it on the old desktop and go select folder. Now it's going to render that file. So I'll see you in three years. Now after doing render in place, as you can see, we're getting a lot better playback than we were when using render cache. And the results still aren't perfect, but this is probably as good as you're gonna get when it comes to 25 frames per second. Also, what we need to know is that when you do render in place, it basically renders out a file onto your computer and then replaces the file or well, the video clip inside your timeline here. So at the moment, all these effects are baked in. That's why we don't have to re-render that clip. But of course you can actually take that off. You can go to decompose to original. Now it's back to the one that was before, but as you can see that render has gone off. So I'll just control Z that. Then I'll go back to the render clip. So if you don't wanna use that render in place and you wanna go back to original, just go to highlight the clip, and go to decompose to original and then it'll get back to the original file. So even though the results aren't incredible, it still looks really good for something that is 25 frames per second slowed down. And remember, this is half the speed that it was. Let's move on to another clip here. And again, this is the same thing. So this is 25 frames per second, as you can see, and this is a 50 frames per second. So we'll just slow this one down. 50%. Now I'm not gonna explain to you how we slowed that clip down because we just did it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slow this clip down 50% and then we'll come back and we'll look at the results. So what I've done is I've just gone ahead and I've done the same effect that we did for the first clip. So the optical flow with the speed warp, which is the best setting. So again, the best setting is real time process, optical flow, motion estimation, speed warp. Now they're not showing up is that I've done it. That's because this is rendered in place, that's why, but it has been done. So this one, and then this one, I've changed the speed from half, and then again, this one. So let's go to this one here. Now this will be an interesting example of how the optical flow works with water, because water is something a little bit tricky when it comes to slow motion. As you can see here, a man has the kettle, and he's gonna pour in that boiling water. Now there's a problem here. Now when it comes to the motion, this actually looks really good. This looks better than the orange, which is really surprising to me. I thought the water would look worse, but it looks good. But there is one problem. The footage actually stops too quickly. Now that is because when we did change clip speed here, we did maintain timing, which means we're maintaining the length of this clip. Because we're doing half the speed, we're actually getting half the clip, but we're still having the full clip in the timeline. I know that was a really weird way to explain it. So the problem is, is that because we've rendered this clip in place, we actually don't have any more to give. So if I was to highlight these and then move them across, we can't get a longer clip. So what we have to do is actually do that again. So again, media pool, and we'll just put a new clip here, change our speed, the exact same thing as it did before, but this time I'll stretch it all the way out so we're getting our whole clip here and I'll do the whole video and real time process and then we'll come back to it. So after 17 full moons and three divorces, I am finally back after that render in place. So now we can look at the footage. Now let's just move it across. So let's get rid of this bad boy here and we'll move these clips here over here, this one over here, this little man over here, and then these little guys over here. Let's play back this and see what it looks like. So this is our 25 frames per second slow down using optical flow. Now this looks pretty good. I'm happy with this result. It doesn't look perfect, but I still think it looks really good. And again, remember we are working with 25 frames per second footage that has been slowed down half. So you're not gonna get the perfect results if it was 50 frames per second slowed down. Now, if we go to our 50 frames, so we can do some judgy judge town. So here's our 50 frames playing back at half the speed. And of course it's gonna look better, but it doesn't look that much better compared to the optical flow at 25 frames per second slowed down. If you're in a pinch and you need to slow down your footage, then optical flow is the method for you. Okay, now let's look at our last clip here to finish off the video. And again, this is our 25 frames per second slow down. I've already gone ahead. And as you can see here, if you don't know your footage is rendered in place, there's two ways. 
it says render down here. And then if you come up to file here, it says the video codec that you've made into the render. Also, it says up here again, render, mov, et cetera, et cetera. So the codec is, because I'm on Windows, DNX HD, 45, 720. Now you can make it a lot better, but a lot of the times it's just better to render in that small one. Then when you go to export it, you change it back. Now let's go to play this back. And this should be interesting because we are dealing with lots of little particles and a lot of movement in the frame. Now with this one, it looks pretty good. We have some weird rippling effect towards the end here, right there. We have a really weird ripple right there. So that's the thing with optical flow. It works quite well if you're not having a massive movement in your frame, because it's just, I can't really figure out what's going on so quickly in between those frames. Now, if we look at our 50 frames per second one, as you can see, we're not getting that ripple effect, of course, because it is 50 frames per second slowed down. So of course, we're gonna get better results. But all in all, I think optical flow is really good when it comes to slowing that footage down that's 25 frames per second. Again, if you were shooting something and you needed to be slowed down and you had a camera that shot high frame rate, then of course you would use higher frame rates. So that is the video for today. I hope you enjoyed me pouring boiling water in a cup, making a massive mess in my kitchen and all in all rolling an orange back and forth on a crooked frame. And again, just to rehash on what we went over today, you would highlight this clip, right click, change clip speed. This is where you would change those settings. Then to get that better, smoother looking image with your playback when you slowed it down, you would go to real time process, optical flow, motion estimation, come down to speed warp. So again, the higher the one, so project setting will give you the least desired effect. And then the bottom one will give you the best effect, but will also be the most intense when it comes to processing that video clip. So that is our wonderful video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have anything you would like to see, make sure to comment below. If you are confused by anything, comment below and I'm more than happy to try and explain it better than I did in this video. For usual, my videos are as mediocre as my framing when it comes to oranges. So thanks for watching. I've been Drew from Gringo Productions. G'day and welcome back. So today in the show, yeah, I can see it. <sighs>